Sadness was my song Then my Savior answered While I was on my knees Shine the light of His love all around me Was blind but now I see While I'm walking in God's sunshine Basking in His love Happy since Jesus is mine Got a home up above Singing as I go along Let my little light shine I'm as happy as I can be walking in God's sunshine. Sometimes the storm clouds gather, sometimes the rain must fall. Teardrops may glisten when heartaches come to call. But there's a bright tomorrow, storm clouds pass away. God's sunlight will shine forever, turn the darkness into day. Well, I'm sunshine basking in his love happy since jesus is mine got a home up above singing as i go along let my little light shine i'm as happy as i can be walking in god's sunshine i'm as happy as i can be walking in god's sunshine For thirty pieces of silver Abused by the people he loved Rejected by his own disciples I know he loved them Loved them because I heard him say Father, forgive them and Jesus was looking down on me Well, I'm an old Roman soldier I stood at the foot of the tree On his face I saw his compassion on his cheeks the tracks of his tears on his back the stripes that he suffered in his side the wound from my spear I heard him say father forgive them and Jesus was looking down on me Well, I'm an old Roman soldier I stood at the foot of the tree And I'm an old Roman soldier I stood at the foot of the tree all my life I've heard them talk of heaven it's a place where loved ones live while ages roll and it's been many many years since sins forgiven and 
And I'm just a little homesick to go Must I wait until the sun dries up the ocean Or the farmer goes to reap before he sows I set my eyes upon the sky for the slightest motion Cause I'm just a little homesick to go Yesterday brought tears and made me wonder If I'd ever walk upon those streets of gold Oh, but Lord, you gave me strength I didn't blunder And I'm just a little homesick to go Must I wait until the sun dries up the ocean Or the farmer goes to reap before he sows I've set my eyes upon the sky for the slightest motion Cause I'm just a little homesick to go I've set my eyes upon the sky For the slightest motion Cause I'm just a little homesick to go On, brother Tim, I want you to sing that or play that I'll fly away again, and y'all know it. Come on, let's sing it. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I
When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Come on, sing it now. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. I'll Hallelujah, by and by, I fly away. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say, say it with me. Hey. Amen. Amen. Page 222. 222. 222. Whosoever meaneth me, singing, I am happy today and the sun shines bright. The clouds have been rolled away. For the Savior said, whosoever will, come with him to stay whosoever surely meaneth me surely meaneth me oh surely meaneth me whosoever surely meaneth me whosoever meaneth me page 219 grace greater than my sin I want you to sing with me this morning sing like you know what you're singing about marvelous grace of our loving Lord grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt yonder on Calvary
I'm telling you right now. But I want you to show off on this last time, all right? Sing together on Marvelous. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. Freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see His face. Will you this moment His grace? Sing it to Him. Give, him a, give the Lord a crazy three-minute praise. Come on now. Yes, grace greater than my sin. Grace greater than your sin. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Woo. I'm about like Ed Blue right now. I'm, I'm getting drunk as a hound. want to do something different this morning. Remember a while back when we sang that song, Somebody Touched Me, uh -huh. and uh, on the day that you got saved, whatever day of the week that is, if it was a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, stand up on your day, amen? And let's just, let's just watch the Lord. Remain standing. Yeah, remain. and remain standing. Remain standing. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Monday. It was on a Monday, somebody touched me. It was on a Monday, somebody touched me. It was on a Monday, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Tuesday. It was on a Tuesday, somebody touched me. It was on a Tuesday, somebody touched me. It was on a Tuesday, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. It was on a Wednesday, somebody touched me. It was on a Wednesday, somebody touched me. It was on a Wednesday. Somebody touched me, must have been the hand of the Lord. It was on a Thursday, somebody touched me. It was on a Thursday, somebody touched me. It was on a Thursday, somebody touched me, must have been the hand of the Lord. It was on a Friday, somebody touched me. It was on a Friday, somebody touched me. It was on a Friday, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. It was on a Saturday, somebody touched me. It was on a Saturday, somebody touched me. It was on a Saturday, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. It was on a Sunday, yes, somebody touched me. It was on a Sunday, somebody touched me. It was on a Sunday, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touched me, glory, 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 somebody touched me, glory, 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 somebody touched me, must be in the hand of the Lord. While I was praying, somebody touched me, while I was praying, somebody touched me, while I was praying. Somebody touched me, must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was shouting, yes. somebody touched me. 
while I was hey. shouting, somebody touched oh. me. While I was shouting, Hallelujah. somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was singing, somebody touched me. While I was singing, somebody touched me. While I was singing, somebody touched me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. It must have been the hand of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, give the Lord another hand. You may be seated. One more announcement to make. Next week you'll see this in your bulletin for sure, but we're going to have the Patriot Quartet. Uh, they'll be here on uh, Saturday, May the 18th, starting at 5 p.m. And I hope that you'll make plans to come. Uh, most of the time when uh, quartets, they, when they travel, and these folks will be traveling from the state of Kentucky, uh, they usually do their best to get a number of other appointments uh, to kind of make a, a circle to get back home. And unfortunately, they, they don't have any other appointments set, uh, but they've been working hard to try to get some, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen right now. But anyway, I hope that you'll come and support them that night, and uh, we will take up a love offering gift for them to help support their ministry. Amen? So please make plans to come. Invite somebody to come with you to the singing. We're going to start at 5 p.m. I would not imagine it would go past 7, so it's still going to be daylight so you can get home in the daylight. Amen? Isn't that a good thing? Amen. 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 I'm glad you guys aren't going to be here. Amen. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. All right. Thank you. If you have your Bibles with you today, you can open them up to the book of Job. The book of Job and also Romans chapter number 3. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Reba. Did we just confuse you over there? No, but I think that ending goes to a different place. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I want to tell you something. I've had uh, three prayers answered and one not uh, today. I prayed this morning. I said, Lord, would you let me see Rand Brother Randy Alt today? Oh. Look who walked in the door. Amen. I prayed for Brother Carl and Miss Sarah to be here today. I see, I guess that was two prayers. Uh, oh, I did pray for Miss Lena and Vernon. So that was three prayers right there that God answered. And then when I prayed, Lord, help us to hit every note accurately in the music, that did not get answered. <laughs> uh, that was me. That was not you guys. Let me tell you that right now. But anyway, well, amen. Amen. Wonderful music this morning. Amen. Grace, grace, God's grace. We're going to sing that at the end of the service today. Uh, well, I'm in Job chapter number 25. Job chapter number 25. And then you can mark your Bibles for Romans chapter number 3. Romans 3. <clears throat> Let me hear everybody say amen. Amen. Okay. I'm going to do some amen, 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 praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. I might need some of those later. That's why I want to get them out there, amen. All right. I heard an old time preacher do that, and I thought, boy, that's pretty good. <laughs> Grab some wisdom every time you can, amen. <laughs> Job chapter number 25 and Romans chapter number 3. We'll be there in just a moment. The book of Job is one of the oldest books of the Bible, perhaps the very oldest. There's some controversy about that. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change anything for us this morning. But the book of Job, it covers the life of a man by the name of Job that endured a personal attack from Satan. Probably have heard this story. But Job was stripped of everything he had, including his ten children by the devil himself. But in the end... If you go to the back of the book, everything is replenished, including ten more 
children. And you know, just keep in mind that the devil comes along to kill, steal, and to destroy. He's not changed his game plan, not one bit. He's still doing what he does best. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. Amen. Amen. But uh, Job, in the end, he had seven sons and three daughters. And the Bible said that in all the land, there were no women as fair as the daughters of Job. In the coming weeks, I hope that the Lord will let me preach a message out of the book of Job. I've been reading some there this week and just some things coming out, jumping out to, to life to me and that uh, seems like never before. But anyway, uh, maybe we'll be hearing a message or two. But today I want to preach from a different area of the book of Job. And this regards a question from one of the three friends that came to visit Job when he was going through his trial. The second friend, as we're going to look at today, his name is Bildad. And Bildad's message to Job, it may sound familiar to the church world today, but we're going to see that his message does not line up with who God really is. Amen? Amen. Bildad has three messages for Job. And here they go. The first message is, Job, if you will repent of your sin, all the material things you lost are going to be restored to you. Have you heard that story before? Yeah. So I guess Bildad thinks that living right means that you're going to gain material things or blessings. Secondly, Bildad, he comes to uh, Job and he says, now God punishes the wicked. So Job, you're being punished because you've done something wrong. Have you heard that before? Yeah. yeah. So thirdly, Bildad, in Job chapter 25, he focuses on the idea that a person cannot be righteous before God. And at the end of the book of Job, God has something to say to Job's three friends. Now you listen to this. God says, my wrath is kindled against you because you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job has. I hope preachers are listening this morning to this message, amen. I hope Sunday school teachers are listening today. I hope Christian laymen are listening to this message today because, listen, God's wrath was kindled against Bildad and his other friends because they had not spoken of God the thing that is right as Job had done. So there's a great message there. In Job 25 and verse 4, Bildad asked a question. It says, How then can man be justified with God, or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? So Bildad's question is this. How can man be justified with God? Over the centuries of time, there's been many different answers, I'm afraid. We're going to talk about, or we're going to mention three different words today. And maybe you might want to write this down. I've tried to shorten the definition as much as I can. But you're going to hear the word justified today. And that simply means being moved from sin over to a righteous state. We're going to mention reconciliation, which means having peace with God. And righteousness means being made right in the eyes of God. Or in other words, being as right as Jesus being as righteous as Jesus. Do you understand today that if you're a born again, saved believer, that you've been made the righteousness of God in Jesus? You have nothing to worry about on the day of judgment, my dear friend, because you've made the righteousness of God in Jesus today. That ought to put a smile on all of our faces. Amen. That ought to make us happy today. If you're listening to me today and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I hope that you will pay particular attention today. And I pray that God will just fill me and bless me and not let me say one word that's not accurate. I want to make this a salvation message today as plain as I can make it today. Uh, I just feel such a burden about preaching messages like this of late. Last week, you might recall, I preached on the rapture. And I believe the rapture is near. And I believe that people need to be getting ready. I know, I know a lot of folks that have never gotten ready. Amen? They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today. And if Jesus comes back today, they're going to be left behind to face seven years of a terrible wrath from God that's going to come onto this earth. And then worse than that, they'll experience the second death being in hell forever. I don't want that to happen to anybody I know. I don't want that to happen to anybody I know. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so we ought to pray for him. So I pray that you'll pray for me as I preach this message today. And uh, we pray that God gets the glory. So let's, uh, let's look at Job chapter 25 
And here's the answer. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies and, and upon whom doth his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Now please go with me over to Romans chapter number 3. Romans chapter number 3. We're going to see that the Apostle Paul has an answer for Bildad's question. How can a man born of woman be justified with God? In verse number, uh, uh, let's look at verse number uh, 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Here's the answer from the Apostle Paul centuries later. Being justified freely by His grace yes. through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and Lord, I pray that you will bless me now, Holy Spirit. God, please guard my tongue today. Let me not say one thing in error. I pray you will fill me. Let my cup run over. Preach me today, Father, I pray. I pray for poor lost sinners to be saved. I pray for Christians to be encouraged. I pray God will learn something here today that will teach us in our spirit how to witness to people, how to bring someone to Christ. And Father, I know that would be pleasing to you for that's the very reason why your son came was to save the lost from judgment. Father, have your way now, I pray, and I ask all this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I have discovered that the question that every sincere person has regarding salvation is this. How can a man be born of woman be justified with God? I wonder if the Catholic is right today. I wonder if the Presbyterian is right today. I wonder if the Episcopalians are right today. They all ask the same questions. How can a man that's born of woman be, uh, be justified with God? The Lutheran, the sincere Lutheran today will ask, how can a man born of woman be justified with God? The Baptist, the independent fundamental Baptist will ask, the general Baptist will ask, the missionary Baptist will ask, how can a man born of woman be justified with God? The Church of Christ member may ask the same question. The Mormon, the Buddhist, the Hindu, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they all have the same uh, uh, question in common. How can a man born of woman be justified with God? You know, it doesn't matter whether you're old or if you're young or if you're a Jew or if you're a Gentile. Everybody has the same common denominator with all men, and that is everybody wants to know for sure that I've been justified with my Creator. All around the world this morning, there are people performing good works and hoping that they can earn justification with their God. Somewhere this morning, there's a man taking a knife and he's cutting his body uh, doing a religious ceremony. Why does he do this to his body? It's an effort to be justified with God. In churches somewhere else, a child is being confirmed this morning in an effort to be justified with God. Everywhere, uh, or excuse me, elsewhere in the world today, thousands are bowing on their knees facing the east several times a day hoping to be justified with God. Why do they do this ritual? They're sincere about their religion. They're sincere about their belief. They are mostly sincere that they want to be justified with their creator. The old time preacher told me one time when he was mentoring me, he said, you know, you can be sincere, but you can also be sincerely wrong. Amen? Regardless of how wrong people are or how perverted their doctrine is, man has one thing in common, and that is he wants to stand before God and be justified before his presence. So who's right? Are the Baptists right? Is the Buddhist right? 
How about the Mormons riding their bicycles through our neighborhoods? Are they right? The Jehovah's Witnesses, they seem to be very eager with their message. Are they right? Do they have the right answer? Are the Lutherans right? Is the Jehovah's Witness right? How about the Church of Christ? Are they right? Let me tell you something, folks. When it comes right down to it, nobody's right. But I'll tell you what is right, and that's the Word of God. The Word of God is right. The Bible is right. Amen? You know, what matters not what's in our creed here at Graceway. It doesn't matter what the Catholic thinks. What does matter is what the Bible says of how a man can be justified. It doesn't matter what the Presbyterian thinks. What does matter is what the Bible says about how a man can be justified. It doesn't matter what the Seventh-day Adventist thinks, but what does matter is what the Bible says of how a man can be justified. It doesn't matter what the Christian scientists may say or think, but what does matter is what the Bible says of how a man can be justified. It's like this. If man has sinned and God has been sinned against, then it is God who dictates the terms of reconciliation. Man has no right to dictate his own terms. Man may say, I think it should be this way to be justified by God, but man has no right to dictate on his own terms. God was the one who was sinned against. Man has not the right to dictate the terms of reconciliation. Reconciliation means to have peace with God. I remember when I was a little boy, when I did something wrong, my dad took that little thin belt that surrounded his belt loops and he warmed up my bottom real fast with that thing a couple of times. I said a couple of times, it did not take me long to get the message who was in charge of my house, amen? I was being punished for my transgression toward my father. I was saying, Dad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. In the same sense, what I was really saying was, Dad, what can I do to make peace with you? Amen? What can I do better? I never one time looked at my father and said, Well, now, Dad, here's how I think it ought to be. Dad was the one who had been sinned against. It was up to him to dictate justification on his own terms, and brother, he did. You know, humanism has been around for a long time. What humanism is, if you don't know, it is the rejection of supernatural and the reliance of human reasoning. Been around for a long time. Across our country this morning, the humanistic person will say, oh, I don't believe that God would send anyone to hell forever and ever and ever. Have you ever heard that? I have. Or they may say, I don't believe God would punish anyone for sin. Well, man has no right to say anything. Man sinned against God, and God is the one sinned against, and so God is the one who dictates the terms of reconciliation, not man. I'll remind you, reconciliation means peace with God. So what does God say? Well, let's go over to the book of Romans, and let's read what God says. We read it a few moments ago, but it's important for us to see it again. Romans uh, 3.24, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God says you may be justified freely by His grace. Yes. Amen. Amen. I knew I was going to need some of those amens I said a minute ago. God says you may be, listen to me, Lost sinner today, if you're listening to me, please. God says this about you, that you may be justified freely by His grace. Yes. Freely by His grace. So the question is, do I have to join a church? No, it's being justified freely by His grace. What about, do I need to take the sacrament? No, it is being justified freely by His grace. In fact, you can take the sacrament every day of your life for the rest of your life and still be a lost sinner and die and go to hell. Can I turn over a new leaf? No, it is being freely justified by His grace. Can I live a perfect life? No, you never have, you never will, and you can't do it. It is being justified freely by His grace. Can I drink some juice and eat a wafer? No, it is being freely justified by His grace. Can I get baptized? Well, it is being justified freely by His grace. You can get baptized every Sunday if you want to, but if you've never been saved... If you've never been justified by His grace, you're going to go to hell when you die. 
Bildad asked this question. Thousands of years ago in Job 25, how can man, born of woman, be justified with God? And Paul answers all through the centuries looking back. He says, Bildad, the answer is being justified freely by His grace. Remember this definition of justified. It is moving a person from the state of sin to the state of righteousness. That's how you get justified. It's by His grace. So why do we go by Grace Wave Fellowship Church? Why does Brother Ray and I, by the way, he's preaching next Sunday. Get ready. He's got his guns loaded. Amen. But why do Ray and I preach the grace of God every service? Why is it on Wednesday night on Bible study the grace of God is brought up? Why? Because it is the grace of God only that saves a man and justifies a man from the devil's hell. Amen. 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 That's why it is important to preach and to teach and to live and to pray the grace of God. Amen. Live it and breathe it. Amen. Yeah. The grace of God. That's how you get justified. If anyone will ever go to heaven or ever has gone to heaven, it is because they've been justified by His grace. In Romans 3.26, the Bible says that God is the justifier of him, this is so simple, which believeth in Jesus Christ. Amen. God is the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. God has many attributes. Some of His attributes are made up of His righteousness and His mercy. Because you see, God is both righteous. He's a God of righteousness. He's a, also a God of mercy. So when God made Adam and Eve, let's go back to the Garden of Eden for just a moment. When God made Adam and Eve, they fellowshiped together in the garden all the time. I just, you know, I don't know. I'm not big on uh, was there a gap theory or, you know, how old the earth actually is. Those things don't bother me. It doesn't change the simple plan of salvation at all. Amen. But it's an interesting study if you want to get into it. I know we got some varying opinions in here. But I, I just wonder, maybe you guys can tell me, uh, how long that Adam and Eve was living on the earth and having this fellowship with God before the fall came. It might have been 20 years. I don't know. Could have been seven days. Who knows? I don't know. I don't care. But the point is this, that Adam and Eve, they fellowshiped in the garden every day with God. And everything was beautiful. Adam one day was holding Eve's hand and he looked over at her and he said, you're the only woman for me. Because she was. She looked at Adam and she said, you're the most handsome man in the world. That's because he was the only man in the world. But there's a message there. I don't know if you read it or not there in Genesis, what he said following that. He says, Eve, thank you for, for that compliment. But I'll tell you, in October of 1955, there's going to be a little baby boy born. And he's going to grow up and he's going to take my place being the most handsome man in the world. So, <laughs> Every day, God would come to the garden and say, Adam, hey, Adam. And Adam, would, Adam and Eve, they would say, it's the Lord. Let's go talk and fellowship with the Lord. And God had made Adam and Eve that they would have fellowship with him because he loved them. And you know what? God did a wonderful thing for Adam and Eve as he's done for you and I. He gave them a will because he did not want them to be forced to love him. He wanted them to love him because they chose to love him. Amen? Amen. You know, I... I, I, I I believe that God, uh, when Adam and Eve went to bed at night, I bet you God was just walking the floor and says, I can't wait for Adam and Eve to wake up in the morning. I wish that, oh, what time is it? I wish they would just hurry up and get up because God loved the fellowship with Adam and Eve. He couldn't wait for them to wake up in the morning. And I'll tell you what, that makes me want to say, I can't wait to wake up in the morning so I can say, thank you, Jesus. Good morning, God. How are you doing today? Amen. <laughs> well, hallelujah. You know, God would come to the garden and he would walk with them and talk with them and he told them that they were his own and the joy they shared as they tarried there, none other has ever known, amen. Oh, what a fellowship. Oh, what joy divine. They had it, brother. Amen. Yes. But then one day things changed. The Lord came to the garden and said, Adam, Adam! Eve? Hey, Adam! Hey, Eve! 
what happened? Well, that wicked serpent had come and he caused them to sin. You know what they did? They hid. Sin will cause you to hide. Sin will cause you to fear. If we took all the tears of mankind throughout all the ages of the world, I don't believe they would compare to the broken heart that God felt that day when man fell. God loved to fellowship with man, and he loved man. I got to thinking about that. God loves to fellowship with man. God loved his fellowship with Adam and with Eve. And you know what God has done another wonderful thing for us. Not only did he give us a will so that we could choose to love him and that pleases him, but God has given us his Holy Spirit yeah. and we fellowship continually with God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that good news today? Amen. Amen. We fellowship, we get the fellowship with God all the time. His Spirit is in us. But man had turned his back on God and now the fellowship was broken, but God is a loving and merciful God. I want you to notice something about this story of Adam and Eve. Do you realize that God already knew what had happened? God, in eternity past, knew that Adam and Eve was going to fall. Even though God came to the garden and said, Adam, he already knew. Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to point out here is that God knowing what had already happened was pursuing them. He wasn't rejecting them. He wasn't turning his back on them. God went to them. Just like the day or the night when you were sitting in a pew somewhere and the Holy Spirit of God came to you and revealed Jesus to you. Amen? Yeah. And brought you to Him. That's the kind of loving God that we have today. That's the merciful God. That's our righteous God. Amen? But just imagine, if you will, a conversation now taking place between the mercy of God and the righteousness of God. Knowing that Adam and Eve has now fallen into sin, fellowship is broken, mercy speaks up and says, I'd like to have them back. The, right, the righteousness of God says, I can't take them back because the soul that sinneth it shall die. The righteousness of God said sin has to be paid for. But then the mercy of God spoke up and said, But righteousness, I love Adam and I love Eve. Please let me take them back. God's righteousness said, I can't take them back because they are sinners. They are separated from me and sin has to be punished. Mercy said, Please, righteousness. Mer uh, righteousness said, No, mercy. Mercy said, but righteousness, I love Adam and I love Eve. Please let me take them back. The righteousness of God says, I can't and I wouldn't be God if I let them come back. But then mercy said, righteousness, is there any way that they can come back? The righteousness of God spoke up and said, there's no way unless sin is paid for. Imagine with me, if you will, listening to the conversation, the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ stands up and He says, Righteousness, I can help. Mercy, I can help. Mercy and righteousness, they step in a little closer and they listen carefully as the Son of God formulates a plan to redeem mankind. Heavenly Father, I'll go to earth and I'll live there for 33 years away from you. I'll live on earth for 33 years without any sin. Then I'll go to the cross and I'll put on myself all the sin of Tim Roller. I'll put all the sins of the drunkard and the drug addict and the God haters. All the sin of the harlot and the thief and the liar and the fornicator and the adulterers. All the sins of every lost unbeliever walking in darkness. Father, I'll put all the sins of every man that has ever been born or ever will be born. There's not one sin that I will leave out. Father, I'll put all those sins on me. What a Savior. What a Savior. 
Jesus, who never knew a bad thought, never used a foul word, he never looked upon that which he should not, he never listened to a wrong conversation, he who committed no sin took upon himself sin. And you'll remember that moment when the Father turned his back and darkness came on all the earth and the earth did quake and the graves were open and Jesus cried out, My God! My God! Why hast thou forsaken me? At that very moment, dear friend, all of your sin and all of my sin, all the sin of every human being that had been born, that was born that day and in the future, was all placed on the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Today and tomorrow, your sin and my sin has been paid for. My sin and your sin is on His record. It's on His record. The Bible says He became my substitute that day at Calvary. The Bible said He put away sin by His sacrifice. For He hath made Him... He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus stood and said, Righteousness, are you satisfied? Righteousness said, Yes, I'm satisfied. Sin has been paid for. Tim Ruller's sin has been paid for. The debt of Adam has been paid for. Eve and Adam can now come back. The debt for all mankind has all been paid for. I said the debt of all mankind yes. has now been paid for. Amen. The debt of all mankind has now been paid for. Yes. The debt of all mankind yes. has all been paid for. Yes. Let that register in your heart today. If you're listening to me and you have never trusted Christ, your debt has been paid for in full by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The mercy of God said, Righteousness, can we take them back now? And righteousness said, Yes, we can now because Jesus and His payment for sin has now satisfied me. Psalm 85.10 says, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. <laughs> well, glory. In other words, peace is, uh, is, uh, justific is reconciliation. So righteousness and reconciliation have kissed each other. Amen. Righteousness says, I have been satisfied. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, now man can be justified. Now man can move from sin to righteousness. How can man, born of woman, be justified with God? Is it by joining the church? No, that won't do it. Is it by water baptism? No, that's not going to do it. Is it by keeping the Ten Commandments? No, it's not going to do it. Righteousness. Do you see Jesus hanging on a cross outside of Jerusalem? Do you know why He's dying? He's paying for all of the sin of the world. Will you accept His payment so that all these people of Graceway might be saved? Yes, I will accept His payment in full. But righteousness... There are some people who want to come another way. Will you accept another way? No, righteousness says. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by Him. But righteousness, some, some of them want to just get baptized in water. No, that's not going to do it. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Some want to drink juice and take a wafer. Well, that, no, that's not going to do it. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Some want to join Grace Way, but they've never been. No, it's not going to. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Some want to turn over a, a new leaf on January 1. That's not going to do it. They must come 
by the way of Jesus. Amen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we all have to die someday until Jesus comes back. When Israel had sinned, they offered a lamb on their altar and they laid their hands on that lamb and at the shedding of blood, their sins were transferred to that lamb. One day when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he did not say, Behold the king of kings, although Jesus would be a king, but not right yet. John the Baptist did not say, Behold the great example, although Jesus was a great example. John the Baptist did not say, Behold the priest, although he would become a priest, but not yet. But what he did say, <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I got something I want to say to you today. We don't need a lamb anymore. That's right. That's right. We don't need another lamb. We don't need another lamb. Every time you sin, if you're going to your knees, say, oh God, please forgive me, forgive me, God forgive me. You're trying to get another lamb. Yeah. Accept the fact that it's once for all it's once for all. Amen. It was a once for all sacrifice for yeah. all sin for all time. Yeah. It was one lamb. Yeah. One lamb has shed his blood. It was the one sacrifice that trumped over any other sacrifice from the old covenant days. Right. If those lambs and bulls and goats would have been sufficient, we would still be doing it, but they are not sufficient. But the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is and was and forever will be Amen. sufficient. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God today, ladies and gentlemen, that when I sin, I recognize that sin because the Holy Spirit says, you've sinned. And I'll say, thank you for showing that to me. Father, I am sorry I sinned. But Father, thank you that you forgave me of that sin 2,000 years ago at Calvary. Amen. Amen. I've been justified freely by the grace of God. Amen. 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 God's Lamb has come. And anybody can be saved that will look to the Lamb on the cross and say, Jesus, I know you died for me and took my sins and paid for them. And I trust you as my Savior. Let me tell you something, friend. God wants you back. God wants you back and He's made it easy for you to come to Him. I'm an easy believism preacher. Amen. I'm an easy believism preacher. I'll say it one more time to get the point across. I am an easy believism preacher. And what that means is, if you will believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Amen. And that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Let me ask you this question. If you had a child that had gone astray, would you make it so difficult for them that they could not come back home? You sure wouldn't do it. And neither has God. <laughs> For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I heard the story about a little lady who was dying. She called for a pastor. And he was gone out of town. A friend called his pastor. When that pastor arrived, he asked this lady a question. He says, lady, can I forgive you of your sins? She said, well, it all depends. He said, well, what does it depend on? Well, it depends on whether or not you qualify. The question was, well, how can I qualify? She says, give me your right hand. Now give me your left hand. She looked up in her dying breath and said, sir, I don't mean to hurt you, but you cannot forgive me of my sins because my Savior has nail prints in His hands. <laughs> Stop trusting, here's the message, stop trusting everything else and trust Jesus Christ with your eternal soul this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Paul! Paul! This is Bildad. I have a question for you this morning. How can man born of woman be justified with God? Bildad! This is Paul talking back through the centuries of time. Here's the answer. Being justified freely by His grace. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Brother Ray, Miss Reva, come on up, musicians.
I just wonder this morning if there's anybody in this immediate audience here at Graceway, maybe you have never trusted Jesus Christ. If that's you this morning, you can trust Him now and He wants to justify you freely and it's by His grace He will do that. If you're in our listening audience by video, thank you for being here and thank you for staying with this message all the way through. But I have a very important question for you. All of eternity rests upon your answer to this question. Are you saved? I didn't ask, had you been confirmed? I haven't asked, or have you been baptized? I did not ask, have you had communion? I'm asking you a serious question. Are you saved? Have you asked Jesus Christ to save your eternal soul? It is so easy to be saved. God has not made this hard. And that's something that I pray you will understand. Maybe your background is you were brought up in church. You were forced to go. You said, when I get 18 and I leave the house, I'm never going to go back. I'll just go back to church whenever I want to go back to church. Now listen to me. It's not even about going to church. Yes, that's right. You heard a pastor say it is not about having to go to church. It's about have you trusted Jesus to save your eternal soul? Have you had a time in your life when you said, Dear God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for me on the cross. And when he was buried, I believe that you raised him back from the dead. If you believe that in your heart, simply ask God to save you and he will. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If that's you today, I beg you, I beg you now, the best I know how, as your friend, perhaps you're watching me today and we know each other. Maybe we've never met, but I'm your friend because I'm telling you the truth today of what the Bible says, not what I see. Please accept Jesus today. Don't miss heaven. Don't miss heaven over, over because you got mad at your parents or you got mad at somebody or you think somebody in church is a hypocrite. Don't, 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 don't lose your eternal soul over those silly things. That won't even matter in a hundred years from now. What does matter is you're going to be somewhere forever. Where's that forever going to be for you? Will it be heaven? To live in the peace of God? To rejoice with Him forevermore? With people that you know that have died in Christ and they're in heaven today? Or will your doom and demise be that you'll be in a flame and eternal hell forever in sorrow that you did not trust Jesus? Finally realizing how much God really does love you. I know that there are people in hell today. They have finally come to the realization, I was so loved. I was so loved that God gave His Son as a sacrifice for me to be saved and I rejected it. Don't let that be you. Heavenly Father, thank you. God, thank you for helping me this morning. God, I have pleaded the best I know how. And Lord, this work has left up your sweet Holy Spirit. And I pray that now, just now, he's speaking to some heart. I pray that as the name of Jesus has been lifted up, that men have been drawn to the Lord. I pray for that lady out there listening. She's wandered far away, and I pray, Lord, she'll come back today. I pray for that teenager, perhaps. I pray, God, that people will be saved today. We're thankful for your mighty grace. Father, if there's one in this building today that wants to come and pray about anything whatsoever, whatever it may be, maybe they're saved and everything's fine. They'd just like to pray for somebody else today. Lord, we'd welcome that. Let them come, and let's all pray together that that soul will be saved. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Would you stand your feet this morning? We're going to sing a wonderful song. We sing it in one of our congregations this morning. I asked Ray, I said, can we just sing that song for our invitation? I think it's very appropriate today. Brother, come on and sing for us, would you? 220, page 220. If you'd like to come forward and pray for somebody today, I'll pray with you this morning. Come on, let's pray. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Greater than all my sin How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden Setting my spirit free For the wonderful 
grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, by the precious name of Jesus. Amen. What a good song to leave on today. Amen. The wonderful grace of Jesus. Man, I tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be saved. Does anybody have a testimony you'd like to share today? Maybe God's blessed you somehow. Like to share your testimony with us? Anybody at all before we leave? Yes, ma'am. That lady right there, I believe God touched and healed her this week. She don't have cancer anymore. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, God is good. Who else? Somebody else.